Now, what I'm doing here, good gentles, is I am centering something someone of my scattered mind needs to do quite often. Is centering. Now, when you center, of course, you have to do it as a child friendly show and do it with a completely straight face. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, we push it back downward. The idea is simple. You don't want a humpity bumpity wiggly wobbly little bowl. That's not your friend. No. If you try to throw like that, which a lot of early potters do, you come up with all kinds of drunken mugs all over the place. <laughs> now, you make a little divot in it, like so. A nice little divot. A little more of a divot. Now you're centering up, and now we're going to open it. So we add a little water for lubrication. Otherwise, you break your fingers and use words inappropriate for a good potter. You stop about a finger's breadth from the bottom, and you select how wide you want your bottom. It is true. You need to understand that when it comes to throwing a bottom like this, the wider the bottom, the shorter and rounder the vessel will be. Alright? Narrow bottom is tall and thin. Never trust a tall and thin bottom. I've always said that. Good wide bottom, good stability. Holds a lot of fluids. Whereas a narrow, thin bottom, it tips over too easily. You go home both broke and sober. Not a stop. Not a stop. Now, now what you got to do, the real trick, is to keep the walls even. So we're going to go in. I'm going to position my hands. I'm going to keep these walls nice and even. Nice and even. You don't want a really thick bottom and a narrow top. No, not good. And you don't want a thick top and a narrow bottom. Remember what he has to say about it. No. Remember we're talking pottery. Pottery. I love it. He's laughing away, looking at the right one. Is it okay to laugh? Is it okay? I love that. You're married, aren't you there, boy? I can tell that from 50 feet. It's like it's a nature reaction. Is it okay, Gary? Yes. Now you're going to go in. You're going to bring this bottom up, like so. Nice and even. Come on, love. I love this bag. This is empty hats, if you aren't familiar with them. To me, the finest of the bags. They truly are. But then again, I'm, I'm a little prejudiced. They have Looney Lucy. A woman I am not fit to walk the ground that falls off of her as she walks across. It is true. Now, I'm going to do one more stretch, and I'm making a cylinder. And the sad part is, the cylinder, yeah, it's been around a long, long time, but i got to tell you, I don't like cylinders. They're very English. They're very English, not my bad. A, they tend to break easily. You want a round curve. Life's about the curves. That's what I'm going to do next, bring the curve in. That's not a bad run. Now, we're going to tend to the feet first, though. I've learned that, you know. It's true. Don't forget the wine poses. Pay attention to the feet. It's fast. Now, once you've trimmed the foot clean, I can now go in with a rib. I've really got to roll these sleeves up. That's why I keep doing this weird thing going on. You catch a sleeve in that thing you need to have, you have art. So, <laughs> it's true. So now you're gonna get a rib. It's the curve of the rib, the curve of your rib. It's what we used to use. Cow rib, sheep rib, occasional Englishman. Whatever you're laying around the place at the time. Now I use wood ribs. It's a lot more interesting than the English. But anywho, I'm gonna take this in. Right now my mother is very upset with me. I can hear her now as we speak. Uh, my mother, she be, uh, she be English, I. But we also have the Irish, the Welsh, and the Scots in the family. Thank good for culture. It's true. It's also the reason why I think God had created alcohol. It kept the Celts from ruling your world. We were heading towards civilization. We passed a pub. That's as far as we got. <laughs> it's just a fact. It's just a fact. Can't help me. Now we're going to stretch it out like so. Nice and easy. Make a nice curve to it. I like this shape a lot. Come to think of it, the older I get, the more I represent this shape. There she goes. 
Now, we're going to do this little trick here. I'm going to take that. That upper edge is just not quite perfect. It's got a little bit of a tiny bit of a hook to it. I'm going to level that out. Hold on a minute. There we go. Rabbi showed me that trick. Anyway, we'll be right along. Um, I love that joke. All the women laugh, all the men go, oh, it's not funny, it's not funny at all. Now, we're going to take this here, round her out. And now I can get kind of a little more designy. I'm going to bring this lip in, stop that. There we go. She's starting to dance a bit because I'm getting really thin. She's not really happy with it. Because you need to understand moisture, well, here's how it works. Water is to clay, as alcohol is to a man. It makes the clay promise things that it has no intention of doing and then falls asleep entirely too early. Yes. And right now the clay has had enough water, really. So what I'm going to do now, I think, is to bring this curve out just a bit more on the side, give it a little more of a bell. Yeah, that's good. I can leave with that. That's coming. Now she's starting to sit a little bit, so I need to get... Here we are. This will do it. We call this the rib of death. There's a reason we call it the rib of death besides being exciting. You see these razor sharp little edges? Well, if you use them correctly, they make lovely patterns. Does it look like I'm just scribbling on it? In reality, I'm gonna make you a nice Celtic knot. Okay? If you use it incorrectly, it can be jammed into your hand and sink down about three and a half inches in the bottom of my hand, which happened three years ago. And I began bleeding all over my pottery and and the crowd began to go wild. Because you're sick little puppies. <laughs> and then they discovered it wasn't part of my show. And they realized it was for real, that I was genuinely bleeding at the wheel. And they began a bidding war. Because they're sick little puppies. <laughs> yes, I sold the piece for like $150. I know they want to bring a little bit of the, the, the potter home with them, but I didn't know how much of the potter they wanted to bring home with them. Hey, you know, price Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's a pretty one. Now the last thing you need to use, now that I've gotten all that out, whoop, I got water in the bottom. Can't leave water in the bottom and ends up cracking it. There's nothing worse when you have a crack in your bottom. Just say no to crack, I've always said that. It's true. Now, you take the sponge, you're gonna soak that water out. So. And then you use the 9th century divorce lawyer. <laughs> yes, you two ladies can lose 150 useless ugly pounds and maintain the castle. It's true. It hasn't been divorced in my family in 800 years. Of course, there was the four accidental poisonings, two missing persons, and an unfortunate fall from the castle keep back in line in 1780. But there has not been a divorce yet. No, absolutely not. No, no the, sanctity of, the sanctity of family has absolutely. I, of course, worry about it when I start getting too much insurance myself. Now, you take it like so, bring it down here, and we're going to cut free here. And what that's going to do is it's going to jam water underneath the pot, allowing it to slide free. And now, we have a lovely Irish shot glass. <laughs> And I do thank you. Now you need to understand, it will be three weeks from the time I throw it to the time you drink from it. Right? These will go home, they'll get leather hard, I'll trim the bottoms, I'll pull the handles today, then I have to assemble them all week, then I have to dry, and they get fired to like 1300 degrees. Okay? Then they come back here and we glaze them. Okay? After they're hand glazed, they travel two hours back home and we fire them again, 2,300 degrees. Stoneware, because I don't make crap, I make good stuff. I do. My stuff is oven proof, dishwasher safe, microwave safe, and I know what you're thinking, wait a minute, this is a renaissance fair, you have no microwaves. Oh yes, we do. If you have a very small lake and a tiny storm blows up, you can take shelter in my cups. <laughs> I'm Irish, we've been sheltering in our cups for centuries. <laughs> it's perfectly all right. It's true. Now, they are cadmium free, lead free, cobalt free, uranium free, and all those things are used in this era. I just find killing my patrons really cuts down the return business, you know what I mean? 
Unless, of course, my lady, you do get tired of your man's company and talk to me later.